I make experimental instruments. I use a lot of found materials and a little bit of electronic knowledge to put things together into something new that makes unique sounds, I hope. What I do is ambient music. Like a lot of guys, I started out on guitar and did a lot of different styles of music, uh, punk rock, swing jazz. And I kind of got to a certain point in my life where I'd said all I thought I could say with that kind of music. Yoko Ono and the Plastic Ono Band, big, big influence. Laurie Anderson's Big Science and America 1 through 4, huge, huge influence on me. King Crimson. Harry Parch is actually kind of my hero. Um, and Cage and some of the more, I guess, classically oriented dudes. We're inundated with sound all the time and we take a lot of sound for granted. There are ways to manipulate, you know, really simple sounds and turn them into something new and really different. I, I call this a spring bass. The frame is a lamp. The bridge is a, a gear out of a snowmobile drive track. Three of the springs are, or strings, are curtain rod springs, and then the fourth string is off of a piano. Just, I just love the resonance I get out of simple string. These are bells out of an old telephone. Those are some kind of rack handles, which I, I need to get some of those today. This came out of a toy piano, kind of like Schroeder's piano on Peanuts. I've built bigger ones. Um, I built one for a guy out of a LP propane tank. Man, it cost a fortune to ship it. I start by building them for myself. But I build for people like me, other performers and composers. So my day job is building experimental instruments. I'm a lucky SOB. It says right in here, it's stamped right into the casement. Pearl Grandfather Clock, Memphis, Tennessee. So we're gonna build this thing I call a uh, chime escapement machine. The chime escapement mechanism is based on clock parts okay. that a buddy of mine so, got at a junk sale. Uh, you can see the hammers, that's how the hammers go. These are the, the chime rods, the part that's gonna actually make the sound. Um, in a grandfather clock, they're suspended and they're, they're generally quite a bit longer. So this is the pickup I'm going to use. It's like a microphone, but it specifically amplifies vibrations. I always have a few on hand because I'm always testing things to see if I can get a sound out of it. And we'll test it real quick before we nail everything down. Plug it into a little tiny amplifier. Sounds pretty good. Perfect. Now a lot of guys would say, cool, they're done. But not me, because I like crazy looking stuff too, and this isn't quite crazy enough. The visual aesthetic is an important thing to me. How do I make this look really good too, so that's not all just duct tape and spit. This is the screen off of an oscilloscope. And then there's gonna be a little light in here, and then we'll put some cool blue lights on the side. And I think that'll look pretty awesome. We need to plug this thing into the modulation delay and see what it sounds like, because I think it's going to be awesome. All right, let's see what happens. There we are. It's like this little autonomous music-making machine. You know, you turn the key up, and off it goes. I am very torqued. <laughs> so I was wondering if I could uh, plug this into a really big bass amp. Absolutely. I call this the Juju Bay. Originally it was a candle holder. There was a glass candle inside it. 
And so I was at the Goodwill and I put it up to my ear and I noticed that these vibrate and make really kind of interesting little tones. I put a pickup and a jack in it and a superfluous blinking light. And um, I think it sounds pretty cool, but I want to see if we can rattle some windows with it. Yes. Let's try a bow on this thing. One moment. I think it's a myth that you have to be a scientist to do science. You make a string vibrate, it makes a sound. The longer the string, the lower the sound. The shorter the string, the higher the sound. I mean, that's what making sound is. It's all physics, and it's fun. You find the stuff everywhere. You just have to have kind of an eye and an ear for the things that you need, and be willing to be just inspired by something. This is, this is the grail. This is, this is what we come for. This will be uh, 25 cents. Oh. So I found this little bear, and we're going to do a little surgery on him to remove his, uh, his malignant chime. The jingle mechanism I get out of a variety of toys. Oh, there we are. Just go home, cut them open, get, get that mechanism out. There it is. A little flapper inside, and the little tines it hits. Shit. That'll work. I found this at a yard sale. I think it was for cookies. I think we'll put the hole in the end. Cylindrical cookie tins, film cans. I've used old lens uh, cases. Any container that will fit in and that you can drill a hole for a jack. So we're gonna slide this in there and we're gonna surround it with uh, foam. This will make it sound more pretty than just rattly. I'm gonna guess if I make a loop of this on my delay and then slow it down, this is gonna sound like a marimba. That's what I'm talking about. Well, we are definitely using this in the show. The bulk of my time is probably spent building stuff, but um, I perform too. I mean, that's a really big thing for me. The material has been carefully prepared and validated to ensure that learning does occur if you complete all of the activities provided. Building things with electronics is a spiritual thing. It's a journey of discovering new things. And if the sound is right, you know, it's something that moves me and hopefully moves other people too. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you. Harry Parch was a musical maverick who rebelled against what he called the tyranny of piano. He broke from the standard 12-tone musical scale and developed his own with 43 tones. Now he just needed to make the instruments to play it. The boo was carved from 64 pieces of bamboo. Taking a device normally used for radiation experiments, Parch created the cloud chamber bowls. His diamond marimba is made of wood blocks and bamboo resonators. Each stroke of a mallet plays a major chord from one angle, a minor from the other. Parch couldn't stand the idea of a stiff tuxedo clad orchestra. He insisted his music involve the performer's whole body and that his instruments be regarded as performers too. Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad.